My dear fellow saints in the Lord, you and I are going to heaven. This is the good news that our Lord has for us in his word today. And so we read again from his word from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. A number of years ago, I was attending a district conference over at Evergreen Lutheran High School, and during the conference, one of the teachers there at Evergreen was addressing us about a divine call that he had received. The call was to leave his teaching at the high school and to take a new teaching position, not with kids, but with adults in Africa. It was, you know, obviously a pretty big step for him. And as he talked about the call with us, he then announced that he was accepting the call. And as he told us that, there were tears in his eyes. He loved his work. He loved his students. He loved the people that he worked with at Evergreen. And as he made that announcement that he was going to be leaving the high school and going over to work in Africa, I'll tell you what, there were tears in a lot of people's eyes because he was one of those guys that everybody loved. Even the kids, his students just loved him. He was the favorite teacher of, of, of the entire faculty. But then suddenly, even with the tears in his eyes, all of a sudden he boomed out in his big voice, I'm going to Africa! <laughs> and, and that just kind of made it better for him and for everybody. With today being the Sunday that we call Saints Triumphant, we're talking today about the final victory that you and I have, as believers in Jesus have. You and I have this final, this ultimate victory of heaven. This is the great truth that allows you and me to shout out, I'm going to heaven! You know, every year, spring of every year, we always celebrate Easter. We celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead after he died on Good Friday. Well, today, we're going to talk about your Easter. About the day that you can look forward to the day when you are going to rise. You know, unless Jesus comes very, very soon you know that you are eventually going to die. But it's also true that someday you are going to rise from the dead again. And, 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 and the life that you enjoy after you rise from the dead is it's going to be so much better. It's going to be so much more satisfying, so much more fulfilling, so much more filled with joy and happiness than even the best day that you have in your life right now. And we want to keep this in mind because it's easy for us, even as Christians, to get caught up in the here and now of day-to-day -day living and forget that there are better things, that there are more wonderful things waiting for us in the future. Even the things, the good things that you experience in your life right now, they can't even begin to compare with the glory that you're going to experience on Judgment Day. So today, 
Let's focus on the truth that leads you and me to say, and you can say it with me, I'm going to heaven. Let's hear it. All right. Now, the Apostle Paul, who wrote these words of uh, 1 Thessalonians, wrote these words to a group of people who had a lot of confusion and a lot of misinformation, which is nothing new. I mean, when we talk about Judgment Day, when we talk about a person's death and what happens to them, uh, there, there is a lot of ignorance, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of misinformation that's floating around. And, and the people to whom Paul wrote this letter had all kinds of questions about the fate of believers who had already died. Now, they knew all about the coming of Jesus at the end of time in the final judgment. And they knew, they knew that on that day that Jesus was going to take his believers with him to heaven. And they weren't worried about themselves, but they were worried about their fellow Christians who had already died. Because somehow, they had gotten this idea that in order to go to heaven, you had to be alive on Judgment Day. And if you had died before it, well, then too bad. You missed out. They thought that if you weren't alive on Judgment Day, that you, you, you weren't going to go to heaven. And that's why Paul wrote these words to them. And he said to them, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. You notice Paul wants to get rid of all their doubts and all their fears and all their worries. And so first of all, he says, okay, let's be clear about the Christians who have already died and what's going to happen to them on Judgment Day. And then he wrote these words to them to explain it to them. He says, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so, we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So we're not going to go ahead of them. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You notice what Paul says, believers who died don't miss out on heaven. Instead, Jesus who died and who also rose again on Judgment Day is first of all going to raise all the dead. And because of that, dead Christians aren't going to stay dead. They're going to rise to eternal life and be with their Lord in heaven. And afterwards... Then Jesus is going to gather together all of his believers who are still alive on Judgment Day and take them to heaven too. Now, that ignorance about Judgment Day and about what happens to a person when they die, it's still floating around today, isn't it? I mean, people have got all kinds of odd and strange ideas and all kinds of questions about what's going to happen to me when I die. What's Judgment Day going to be like? Some people believe, you know, of course, that once you die, you're dead and you're gone. There isn't any more what you had in this life. We hope you had a good one because that's all you're going to get. Well, that's what some people believe. Other people believe that uh, everybody is somehow going to wind up in heaven. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter who you are everybody's going to get to heaven except for, except for, of course, the really bad people, whoever they might be. So you make your own list of who the good people are and who the bad people are, the really bad people. And of course, where do you always fit in? You always fit in with the good people, don't you? Because nobody ever wants to say, well, I'm sinful and I'm a bad person, so I don't deserve to go to heaven. But that's the wrong idea that's floating around. Other people believe that there's going to be some kind of a rapture before Jesus, you know, before Judgment Day, that, that Jesus is going to come back in secret. And he's going to grab certain people, certain believers, and snatch them off into heaven. But this is going to be a big secret, and you're not going to know anything about it 
unless you happen to be participating. And you, and you know, maybe what the saddest thing is is that there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of Christians who themselves aren't really sure if they're going to go to heaven when they die. You, you ask them, you know, you, what's going to happen to you when you die? And they say something like, well, I hope I go to heaven. All right, you can get rid of all that doubt and confusion. Paul says, we don't want you to be uninformed. God wants you to know that we will be with the Lord forever. Christ lived and he died and he paid for your sins that would have kept you out of heaven. Those who trust in him for the forgiveness of their sins and for the promise of eternal life have triumphed already over their sin. They have triumphed over death. Heaven has already been opened to you. And in the end, you and I are going to be with the Lord forever. And so you can say with confidence, I'm going to heaven. Because of what Jesus has done for you. By being your holiness before God in his life, by shedding his blood on the cross and by rising from the grave, the verdict of not guilty over your sin has already been passed on you. Heaven is yours. You're going to be with the Lord forever. And there isn't going to be any rapture that's going to take place in secret. Jesus says when the end comes, you'll know it. Nor are there going to be any surprises on Judgment Day. It's not like you're going to get to the gates of heaven and God's going to look at you and say, Oh, sorry. I changed my mind about you. That's not going to happen. Right? And so you can say it with confidence. I'm going to heaven. And my fellow believers, when you get there, it's going to be wonderful. It'll be far better than anything that you know or that you experience right now, even on the best day of your life. That's because you're going to be with your Lord forever in the glory of his home. In the book of Revelation, we get a little glimpse of what heaven is going to be like for you, for the believer in Christ. There, John, who was given a, a picture of heaven, John writes this, they, that is the believers, are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what God says to you? When you get to heaven, there aren't going to ever be any bad things happening to you ever again. Nothing to make you sad. Nothing to make you cry. That's because all the sin that causes all the bad stuff, it's going to be gone. It won't be there. You are going to get to see face to face your Savior who loved you so much that he was willing to sacrifice his love, his life for you. And you're going to be not only get to see him, but live with him. And he's going to show you his love and his care all the time. And that body that you're limping around with right now, it isn't going to be the same. It's going to be wonderful. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians that when you and I get to heaven, Jesus is going to transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And so all the weaknesses that you have right now, they're going to be gone. 
You're going to have a glorious body just like the one that Jesus has. And while we don't know exactly what, that, what that's going to be like, we can tell you that it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be perfect. And none of that glory is ever going to end because this is eternal life for you. And because of that, you can look forward to the day of your death and you can look forward to Judgment Day, and you can triumphantly say, I'm going to heaven. When days get hard, and they look dim, you can look ahead and know that these days are temporary. You're going to heaven. When your body is wearing out and sometimes it hurts so much that you just want to cry, you can look ahead and you know that it's going to be all better because you're going to heaven. When life disappoints you and you wish it would just all get better again, you know that it will because you're going to heaven. My friends, you are the triumphant saints. You are those who have been washed clean of all of your sin in the blood of Jesus and have been declared holy by God, holy in his sight. You are those who know the truth that through Christ you will be with the Lord forever. Rejoice in that truth. Share that truth. And shout that truth out aloud. I'm going to heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all our human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.